mercy. We thank you, God, that you allowed us to come together again to gather in your house to give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. We thank you for this service tonight, God. I pray that you anoint this service, moved by your spirit and your power tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will bless every participant on the program tonight. I pray, God, that you will be with them, God, in the name of Jesus. Uh, I pray, God, that you'll be with our efforts tonight as we glorify your name, as we do it to your glory and your honor, in the name of Jesus. And God, we'll be so careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, for it all belongs to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. At this time, we get ready to have our scripture reading. Amen. From Sister Terica Sykes. Amen. I might have said her name wrong. Did I say it right? Terica Sykes. We, she's going to come with our scripture reading, and then we'll be in the hands of our MC. Let's say amen for as she come. Today, I will be reading from the Old Testament Psalms 126 and 3. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad. And I will also be reading from 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Jesus is real to me. Oh, yes. He gave me the victory. So many people doubt him. I have not been proud of him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. In the morning, he's real. Real. Jesus is real to me. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. In the morning, he's real, real. Jesus is real to me. Oh, yes. He gave me the victory. So many people doubt him. I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. In the morning, he's real, real. Jesus is real to me. Oh, yes. He gave me the victory. So many people doubt him. I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. Let's give God some praise. Let's give God some real praise. If he woke you up this morning, give God some praise. If he stirs you on your way, Give God some praise. If you can't live without him, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have the activity of your limbs, give God some praise. For he's worthy to be praised. Give it out to God who's the head of my life. Let me take those off so I can see. Who's the head of my life? See, I get excited real quick when I think about the goodness of Jesus. And all he's done for me just on today. Welcome to the now I gotta put my glasses back on, excuse me. Celebrating our past. Real, real. Jesus is real to me for the millennials. This is what we used to sing back in in the 70s and stuff, you know, and before. Then it says transforming our present and then envisioning our future. See, our future are the children that we bring to church, that we come in contact with, the young people, the group we call the millennials. That's our future. So we talked about it on yesterday on how to properly dress and how to properly talk to the young people and how to talk to each other and how to be a role model, how to be a lady, how to be a gentleman. One thing we have forgotten is some of the gentlemen don't know how to tie neckties. Some of the gentlemen don't know how to give handshakes and give eye contact, Pastor. They don't. What they do is they'll look past your shoulder like they're looking at you. Watch when you shake their hand. They're going to look past you 
instead of looking at you in the eyes. So we, it's on us, everybody, to teach them. I can't see y'all with those on. It's on us to teach them these little things that we forget to say good morning. Give my contact, shake their hand. How you doing? I see you. Head nod goes a long way. Even if I can't get to you, a head nod goes a long way. That's good customer service. That's good teacher right there. How you doing this morning? One of the young ladies got me today. She was like, hey, sugar. Because I go around and I talk to people and I'm like, hey, sugar. You know, because that's how we communicate. And so when she gave it back to me, I'm like, oh, that's good teacher. So she got it. So I got a smile on my face. So without further ado, that's your welcome. We are we honor God. We honor our bishop to the well-addressed house. So we're going to be here for the, the program, which says celebrating our past, remember where we came from, trans transforming our present. That's on us to transform our present. And then envisioning our future. So what our future is about to come through the door. So I need y'all to get, I like these are all your children, even if you don't know them. I want y'all to just make them feel so welcome, like, oh, my God, we at the Bulls game, and they was winning when they did three in a row. Not this team we got right now. So when they come in here, I need y'all to just go ahead and give it to them. So celebrating our past. In our past, we had Althea Gibson, who broke the color barrier, and now we have Serena Williams and her sister, Venus Williams. We have doctors. We have photographers, we have professors, we have chefs, we have athletes and choreographers, we have fire chiefs and chiefs of police, we have surgeons, we have professors and educators. Yes, give them a round of applause. This is our youth. This is our youth. Now, if everybody would please stand, we have the bishop and the first lady of the training of Generation Church of God in Christ, Bishop Terry Jones, and his sister, Shelby Joy Jones. Meet it with the words of amen. Come on down. He forgot his Bible, y'all. We still, we forgot his, he forgot his cross, too. Give another round of applause. Now, the program calls for, they probably have to do a little wardrobe change. It calls for rejoice. Meet it with the words of amen. I used to be so broken, lost, empty A heart with no beat A singer with no song to sing So I know the feeling The silence is deafening But in your pain lies a blessing in a sweet and sour victory. So keep walking, 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 though it seems so far. No matter who you are, see, there's one thing that. Try 
listen to me I know you're scared Your heart's bleeding But what are you gonna do now? I think it's time you break free Hey, keep walking, walking, walking Though it seems so far No, it doesn't really matter who I was almost done I wanted to die From how I was done wrong I cried out every night Looking for a helping hand That's when it happened Jesus took me And he held me close Gave me love, refilled my heart Helped me grow better because His love, it made me always available Anytime, try him out No change of life It can leave you so bitter, 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 bitter. But you must believe that it gets better, better, better. Yeah. Life it can leave you so bitter, bitter. Reflections of Black History Month, Sister Carmela Ziegler. Meet her with the words of amen. amen. Good morning. Or afternoon. Hello. Okay. Reflections on Black History Month. There is still progress to be made. 78 years ago, Negro History Week, the precursor to Black History Month, was created to allow for the identification and celebration of the contributions of African Americans in our history and in our presence. While Black History Month promotes African American cultural empowerment and understanding, it also inspires learning for all age groups and ethnicities. In 1915, the Harvard-trained African-American historian, Dr. Carter G. Woodson, founded the Association for the Study of Negro, now African-American, Life and History to research and document African-American history. Woodson felt strongly that a more pervasive and thorough understanding of African-American history would accomplish two very critical goals. 
First, a more in-depth understanding of African-American history would promote pride within the black community. Second, a deeper understanding and appreciation for Black History Month would foster greater respect for the African-American community within the broader society. In February 1926, Woodson introduced the annual celebration of Negro History Week, purposely choosing the second week of February for the annual event to commemorate the birthdays of Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln. Over the last few years, there has been much discussion about Black History Month outliving its usefulness. Some have criticized the selection of February to commemorate black history by saying it's the shortest month of the calendar year. Others have claimed that America shouldn't shortchange African American contributions by limiting discussion and recognition of black achievements to only one month during the year. And there are even some who question why African Americans need a month to celebrate their history. Most of these arguments are affected at best and at worst. In the 78 years since the founding of Negro History Week, there have been many positive changes, like Michelle and President Obama, who have served two terms, like Bishop and Lady Walker, who have been blessed to serve year after year with us all. Woodson would be honored to see that his efforts and assertions have played a role in making black history a well-established, legitimate, and respected subject of study. Yet while celebrations of black respectability, there is still progress to be made. The social, psychological, and economic advances that Woodson presumed would flow from his efforts for black are still difficult to identify at the beginning of the 21st century. So until African-American history is included in the history curriculum of elementary, secondary, and post-secondary institutions, Woodson visions still remain unfulfilled. And the contributions black Americans have made to further modern society with advances in medicine, technology, science, engineering, transportation, and aerospace communication, just to name a few, are underrepresented. Black history and the celebration of it is critical at a time when racial profiling, professional inequality, and failing school systems are not yet achieved in history. The commemoration of the struggles, achievements, and milestones of black men and women of the past and present day reminds us of the progress that has to be made, but equally as important, the distance that our nation has yet to travel. Beautiful. At this time, to save a little time, I'm going to ask that the Children's Church Choir would get in place, and if the choir would please get in place, so that after Brother Malcolm Hughes, we'll be ready to sing. If you all would move expeditiously to the choir stand, the choir, and the Children's Church Choir, please. And we're right now, we're going to come, put your hands together for Brother Malcolm Hughes with the celebration of black history. Amen. Give honor to God, my pastor, my bishop. We're celebrating Black History Month. Martin, while Martin Luther King was fighting during the Civil Rights Movement, he felt in his heart that he needed someone or somebody to come along and to show black Americans on a global, national level. While he had pondered that in his heart, a young lady named Michelle Nicholas, born in Robbins, Illinois, went to, New went to California and auditioned for a role that she had no idea she would get. While there, she had been reading this book that was wrote, written in Swahili, and the producer had written, had, 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 some, excuse me, had, had, she was, had not written the book, she had wrote, read the book. While she was there, the producer had read the same book. And he, he was so fascinated with what she had written, it was in Swahili, and they began to talk about the book. Well, as they talked about the book, there was a character in the book named Ura. And he said, you know, that, that could be your character. And he cast her into Star Trek. 
She became the first black female to have a leading role on a national TV. While she was there, she was the first black woman to be filmed in an integrated kiss, which caused a little friction. Okay, and all this her doing, she gets all this fan mail and all this popularity. She decides she's going to go to New York and join Broadway. She goes to her boss, the director, and said, listen, I'm going to, I want to resign. He said, resign? He said, why don't you think about what you're trying to do? Give it a weekend. Give it a thought. While she was away during the weekend, she went to a fundraiser in Beverly Hills with the NAACP. Someone comes up to her and tells her, so one of your greatest fans are here today to see you. She said, really? So she began to perceive to walk towards them. At the same time, there's Dr. Martin Luther King. She says, well, they got to wait. There's my leader, Dr. Martin Luther King. And he says, I'm your greatest fan. He said, your television show is the only show I allow me and my children to watch because it's, 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 it's cast during their bedtime. He said, me and, my me and my wife is your greatest fan. She said, well, I'm talking about leaving. He said, you can't leave. He said, you cannot leave this role. He said, do you know what you're doing? He said, the role you got have shown black America on a global national level, intelligent, smart, and in space on a daily basis. He said, if you let this go, you'll shake the world. He said, this is our only chance to be seen all over the world. So she goes back to her boss and she explained what Martin Luther King says. He says, thank God somebody sees what I'm trying to do. As a result of that, she became an ambassador for NASA and be began to recruit black minority women to be astronauts. She was born right here in Robbins, Illinois. How about that? Great God, great God, yeah. Great God, great God, oh. Hey, y'all. Great God, great God, oh. Great God, great God, yeah. Oh. And we love your name. We praise your name.
Give Ozzy another round of applause. They was in rehearsal, and I was like, Shelby Joy getting down. They was like, Shelby Joy was like, that's not me. I was like, who is that? I like him right there. That's Ozzy right there. Get the children another round of applause. At this time, we're going to have a roundtable discussion. He must have disappeared. With Deacon Moore and the preteens. They like that, the preteens. Give them a round of applause as they come. Praise God. Give honor to God on tonight. We're going to have a, well, I'm going to have a discussion with our young people. And it is important to have these discussions with them, you know, to talk about our past and our history. And um, we're just going to have a, a little discussion. And I think y'all are going to be surprised with how much they know. So we're just going to have a discussion and talk about different people, different history makers. And we're going to start off by introducing yourself. My name is Justin. My name is Tanaya. My name is Taylin. My name is Jasmine. My name is Izzy. All right, now I want to see who, who was listening while she was giving her speech. Who was the person that started Black History Month? Carter G. Woodson. All right. We're going to start off with who is Claudette Colvin? Claudette Colvin. Claudette Colvin was the um, first black Af um, African American who sat front in the um, bus while she was pregnant, but No, she was pregnant, so they let her slide. Uh -huh. so they let her slide she was pregnant. Yes. Now, was she before Rosa Parks or after Rosa Parks? Before. This was before Rosa Parks? So she was, she was the first one. So we're going to go to the next person. Who is George Steeny? George Steeny. Um, he was a 14-year-old boy that was accused of killing two white girls in 1942. Um, he was later executed by the electrocution. 70 years later, they figured out he was innocent. He was only 14. So how how do that make you all feel? Sad. 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 Sad and mad. Sad and mad. Now, what about Emmett Till? Um, Emmett Till, he was with his auntie in the summer, and he was accused of whistling at a... Uh, white woman so um they at night they had drug him at his house and they beat him and then they drowned him and then um when his mom finally found him she had an open casket because she wanted to know she wanted to tell the world what had happened to her son and he was really beat up now where was emmett till funeral held robert temple church of god in christ And where was, where was Emmett Till from? Where was he from? Chicago. Y'all got anything else y'all want to add to Emmett Till? All right. All right. Did you know that over 50,000 people went to view his body while it was at Roberts Temple? And also, there's a seven-mile stretch of 71st Street that's named after... Emmett Till. So, Izzy, who is Henry Box Brown? 
He was an African American slave that freed himself by shipping himself in a box on into a boat to Philadelphia. Hey Amen. Y'all may not have heard of uh, Henry Box Brown. He was, like Izzy said, he was a slave. He came up with this brilliant idea to ship himself in a box to freedom. So he, he mailed himself to freedom. So. And it actually took 27 hours for him to get to where he was going. And so he was in the box for 27 hours. Do y'all think y'all could have stayed in the box for 27 hours? <laughs> All right. Yeah, he, he, he had food. <laughs> she asked, did he have food? Yeah, he only had an apple and a little bit of water. So while we was talking about Robert's Temple, who is the founder of the Church of God in Christ? Come on, Josh. Charles H. Mason. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And I think we're going to stop right there because we're going to come back to you a little later with part two of our roundtable discussion. This is a good old program right here. I'm learning a whole lot of stuff. Next we will have the choir. After that we will have a spoken word by our own Myrna Favors, followed by our round table discussion part two, the offering and then the choir. Oh. 
Blessed Jesus Hold My Hand. It was written in 1933, and we just kind of put a little beat to it. So you all clap your hands with us.
Tosin. Good evening, Friendly Temple. I'm going to come to you with a quick spoken word. So I'm looking around the room, and all I see is excellence, black excellence. Give it up for yourselves. I see a people that's not afraid to use their various gifts that's locked up inside of them. I don't see defeat, I don't see failure, I don't see fear. All I see is excellence, black excellence. I see millionaires. Y'all don't see it. I even see billionaires. I'm somebody in this room. I see successful entrepreneurs. I see a phenomenal library from all of the books that will be birthed out of this ministry. I see Lifetime Achievement Award recipients. I see award-winning compositions from songwriters and composers. I see successful athletes. I see people that will take ministry across the world, across the world and to the next level. I see us taking dominion over the arts, media, and entertainment industry, the beauty industry, the business and administration, the information technology, education, and health fair. Man, I wish y'all can see what I see. Where are all of the black queens in the house? I see you showing the daughters how to be women, wives, and mothers, how to build their house with their hands and not pluck it down. I see you showing them how to dress in strength and honor and to fear the Lord and wear up all of the black kings. <laughs> I see you teaching our sons how to be men, how to walk like a strong black man, how to talk like a strong black man, how to live like a strong black man and how to serve God with their whole heart. I see a beautiful people who love God and won't forget him when they walk into a wealthy place. A wealthy place that will be from the labor of your hands. So don't, dis don't get discouraged if people come against your greatness because they see it and they can't stand it. When you look in the mirror, can you see it? I hope you do. Our creator, the Lord, he made you. And you're beautiful. He made your brown skin, your kinky curly hair, your distinct features, your aura, your intellect. He made all of that. And I can imagine him thinking when he made you, wow, that's excellence. That's black excellence. Thank you. Black excellence. Give another round of applause. Now walk into it. Now how we, what we learned out last week, we was made for this. All right, now we're gonna have a round table discussion part two. So we're gonna have part two. And on this time, we're gonna talk about some, well, I could say some, some of the people in the present that's making history. All right, so Jasmine, who is Barack Obama? Um, Barack Obama was the 44th president. Um, he was the first African-American president. Um, he, was, he was born in Hawaii. Um, his, his slogan was, yes, we can. And um, that reminds me of the scripture that says, I can do all things with, through Christ who strengthens me. <laughs> now, Jasmine, what about Michelle Obama? She made, she made CPS food nasty. <laughs> 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 
So, she made CPS food healthy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so now, Justin, who is Kobe Bryant? Kobe Bryant was killed in a helicopter crash, and he had three children, and his 13-year-old daughter died with him in a helicopter crash. A basketball player, played for the Lakers. <laughs> what else did he do? Uh, he won five championships. Is he better than Michael Jordan? No. Is he better than LeBron James? Yes. <laughs> uh, did y'all know that he, he wrote children's books? And that he came with a, uh, he made a short film that he got a, a Academy Award for? All right. Tayana. Tanaya. Tanaya. <laughs> Who is Chance the Rapper? Um, Chance the Rapper, he like helped the community and he came to different people's schools and paid for like Nike to redo their school and it's just cares for the community. How much money, do you know how much money he donated to the schools? No. He donated over a million dollars to CPS. <laughs> what? So I got, I got a question for the table. What if you had a million dollars. What would you do to help somebody? I'd give it to the homeless people. Say it again. I would give it to the homeless people. <laughs> what would you do, Jasmine? Um, I would keep some of it. <laughs> and um, uh, I don't know what to do with the rest. Izzy, what would you do with the money? Share with my family. All right. Now, while we was talking about uh, schools and CPS, do you know that a long time ago that black people couldn't go to school with white people? How do y'all feel about that? How do you feel about that, Izzy? Or what is that called? Racism. Mm -hmm. And what else? Segregation. Who could tell me what segregation is? When blacks and whites were not equal, separated. I was actually going to say the same thing as him. Okay. So do, did y'all know that blacks and whites, they, they stopped black people from getting an education and that's how they stopped us from voting. So before the, the Voting Rights Act was passed in 1965, they used to make uh, black people take a literacy test in order to vote. But most of them couldn't pass this test. It was unfair because they didn't have an education. They've been banned from having an education. So that's why it is, it is, it is uh, important to vote, you know? We, while we got voting coming up, it's important to vote. And so that's why I make sure that I vote every year, even, even if I don't like the candidates. There are times where I don't like either candidate, but I make sure that I vote. So I wanted to throw that in there. So let's... Let's go way back. Who is Harriet Tubman? Harriet Tubman was an African American who freed all the slaves from slavery all from right. the other Underground Railroad. Now, did they have white people helping them? No. <laughs> Wait, white what? people. Oh, yes, they did. They oh, yeah. I mm -hmm. forget. So there were white people that, that helped them. Now, do you guys think that 
all white people back then disliked black people? Some people, some white people didn't. Some white people helped them? Yes. All right. And what do y'all think about slavery? What do y'all think about slavery? What do you think about slavery? What, what did you tell me earlier? I said that they could have did the stuff that the black people did for them of slavery themselves. Amen. <laughs> they could have worked for themselves, right? And now, uh, do you think, anybody can answer this, do y'all think it is important for black people to go and vote? Go. I think it's important, yes, I think it is, it's important because um, if we don't like somebody, maybe like it's some people that don't like it, somebody, and then like it can count of more votes, and then if you don't think they should be in office, then you could like say it and maybe like keep they won't be in office. Amen. Amen. So that will conclude our discussion with the young people. Let's give them a hand. Give him another round of applause. That was awesome. Now, this is the part of the service where we all can join in. It's just time for the offering. Where are the deacons? Yeah. <laughs>
clap your hands. At this time, we're going to call our gospel message, Missionary Sonia Evans. Meet her with the words of amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Praise God. I do give honor to God, honor to our pastor, Bishop Walker, and to our first lady, Solana Walker. And I do thank God for this opportunity. I thank God for everything that's gone on today thus far. I enjoyed the message this morning from our bishop. I enjoyed my meal. I don't know if I enjoyed it because the food was so good or the service was excellent. The young people served me with a smile. It was excellent, and I just thank God for that. I won't be before you long. I will do a little teaching. Uh, and a lot of it, as I do teach, and so a lot of what I'm going to say is a recap because the young people cover just about everything. And then with the prophecy of the spoken word, and I don't know if I'll be speaking as well as Sister Carmela, but I'm going to try to do my very best, okay? Amen. Praise God. Shall we pray? Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we come to say thank you, Lord Jesus. Speak through these clay lips of mine, Lord Jesus. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So when I was asking the Lord, what should I speak on for Black History Month? He gave me the subject of, do you remember? And so then when I was thinking about that, something, it, I don't know why, but it's dropped in my spirit. Do you remember? Was a question asked over and over and over again. It was the number one single in 1978. Right. Now, I ain't been saved all my life. But I am standing before you saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost today. But in 1978, by earth, wind, and fire, it was called September. Do you remember? All right? That's just a little uh, black history musical, just to get your attention, okay? It's old school, so some of y'all young people might have to Google it, okay? Okay, but do you remember? Understanding our history allows us to appreciate our present and strive for a better future. So, this is February, so I'm asking you, do you remember? The amplified version of Psalms 143 and 5 says, I remember the days of old. I meditate on all that you have done. I ponder the work of your hands. I thank God for Black History Month because it allows us and it uh, directs us to look back and recognize how far we have come as black people. The positions and titles we hold today are because of the pioneers that went before us. Our education and our degrees we have obtained because of the shoulders on which we stand. The blessings we receive especially our young people, are because of the footprints we are able to step into. Praise God. The icons that showed value, they showed how to uh, mold our future and instill purpose in our lives. Now, the school system will teach black history, and no matter how old we get, February Black History Month helps us to remember. So I ask again, do you remember? This is a recap. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who was a Christian minister, civil rights activist, Nobel Prize winner, and known for his famous speech, I have a dream, I have a dream. 
extreme. See, you do remember. Then we have Harriet Tubman, and there's an excellent movie out that tells part of her story. You seen it? It's a good movie. She was born a slave, escaped, and was on a mission to return from which she came to rescue approximately 70, in, 70 enslaved people. She is known for the Underground Railroad. Yeah, you remember, and you remember. Now today, the history books tells us about President Barack and Michelle Obama, which the young people mentioned. Number 44th and first African-American president and first lady of the United States of America who served, they said, two terms. Two terms you remember. Uh, president Obama's campaign slogan was? Yes, yes, and, and the young lady said, we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us, okay? <laughs> so this, heroical, this historical event took place 45 years after I Have a Dream era. Praise God. However, those school history books, they don't tell the whole story. They don't educate on everything, the things you need to know, someone you should know, and historical events that imparted in us. We should remember Mother Lizzie Wood Robinson, an evangelist in the Church of God in Christ. She was the overseer of the women's work, like Home and Foreign Mission, Bible Band, Sewing Circle, and other things. She became the first international general supervisor of the Church of God in Christ. Mother Lizzie Robinson was imprisoned often because of her faith and even rotten egged for her teaching of the Word of God. Also, we should remember Mother Lillian Brooks Coffee. I'm talking about the women because I'm a woman now, who was a general mother who continued the women's auxiliaries. Mother Coffee was a dreamer. Our pastor is a dreamer. She was a dreamer and implemented the first international women's convention. She instituted the Lillian Coffee Train fundraiser for $100 for the delegates. I was impressed by that. She is remembered for the singing, We Have Come This Far By Faith, Leaning on the Lord. On today, we celebrate our past. As a religious organization, we would not be where we are if it was not for, they told us, our founder, Bishop Charles Harrison Mason, a sharecropper and evangelist who is the founder of the largest African-American Pentecostal denomination, Church of God in Christ. I love this church. In addition, he is remembered for his first sermon on holiness. And it comes out of the book of 2 Timothy 2, 1 to 3. I'll read. Though therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Now, I know you remember. I know you remember our Bishop Cody Vernon Marshall. Give it up for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A holy man of wisdom that transformed our present. He was born in Cook County Hospital served, he, rec uh, he received a BA in chemistry. He served as president of the auxiliary chaplains of Cook County. He was the international treasurer for the Cook, uh, Church of God in Christ. He was the founder of Freedom Temple Church of God in Christ where our jurisdictional headquarters is located which houses 1200 seat sanctuary, praise God. Just to name a few, I could go on. Bishop Cody Vernon Marshall is remembered for the saying, take, take, take somebody by the hand and tell them, but the Lord has been to me. Amen. You do remember. We gonna remember that, right? Amen. Praise God. Today, we have history in the making. 
We have leadership envisioning our future with our current international presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ Incorporated. This is somebody you should know, Apostle Charles Edward Blake Sr. He is the leader of six million member Pentecostal Holy Denomination and it's growing. He was elected the seventh succession and Bishop Blake can be remembered for his motto. Let's see if you know this. I can see you in the future, and by the grace of God, you look much better than you do right now. We got to remember that. We got to remember that. So those are people and things we should remember. Some are in the history books, and some should be in the history books. Now, there's a book of history, the world's best sold book more than five billion copies, that's with a B. The book is not taught in the public schools. It's not even on the school supply list. I got some teachers in here now. The reason being is because the people of power have forgotten to remember the power source taught in the books of the Bible. Amen, somebody with me back there, somebody with me. It's good to know our black history, but it's better to know about the one who created everything, about brought us through from the past to the present and into the future. Do you remember? Do you remember the one that woke you up this morning? Do you remember the one that started you on your way? Do you remember the one that put clothes on your back, food on your table, a roof over your head? Do you remember? Psalms 126 and 3 says, the Lord had done great things for us, wherefore we are glad. The one that makes a way out of no way, do you remember? The one that died on the cross for you and me. The one that was rose from the grave after three days and he lives today and forever. Do you remember? Do you remember the one that said, I will never leave you nor forsake you? Do you remember? Do you remember the one that said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me? Do you remember? Do you remember the one that, said, that delivered you from sin? Do you remember the one? So as I get ready to take my seat, do you remember the author and the finisher of your faith? Do you remember the one that is the beginning and the end? And his name is? Jesus. Say his name again. His name is Jesus. Jesus is the one that we should always remember. So help me sing this song as I go to my seat. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. How can I forget what you've done? Amen. Clap your hand and give the Lord praise. God bless your missionary Evans on tonight. Stand to your feet. We're getting ready to receive the greatest pastor, bishop, on this side of heaven. Let's praise God for the pastor and the one and only, Bishop E.M. Walker. Let's praise God for him as he comes. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget no name. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget no name. Amen. You can take your seat. Man, God bless you, and certainly we thank God for being here on tonight. Save and sanctify, baptize, and fill with the Holy Ghost and fire. I love the Lord. I love him for real. And uh, I want to say that I thank God I have been inspired and encouraged by the program on this evening. Can we take a moment and give all of our young people a hand that participated? God bless 
God bless them. Amen. And God bless our messenger on tonight. God bless Missionary Evans. Come on, let's praise God for her. Amen. And certainly we honor all of these preachers and to all of the deacon brothers, mothers, missionaries, saints, and uh, all of you African Americans tonight. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We're glad to have you here on tonight, and uh, I've enjoyed everything on tonight, and uh, I'm glad to hear our young people learning and uh, gaining the information of our history, because it is a wonderful history. It's very rich. It's, it's full of uh, a lot of hardship, heartache, and celebration. Amen. We have really come this far by faith. Amen. We thank God for uh, what God has done for us as a people. And I was talking with Elder Smith. Elder Smith, can you come here and tell us about your dad right quick? I mean, this is a point of uh, African-American history I thought uh, you all might enjoy. Uh, tell us about your dad right quick. Praise God. This is a part of black history. My father was the first uh, black garbage man that worked for the city of Memphis. And they carried a 50 gallon drug over, over, on their shoulder. They had a strap and they lifted the, the, the uh, drum on their shoulder, which was very heavy. You, know. you all know what a 50 gallon yes, pail looked like. But anyway, he got tired of lifting them up and he went to the boss man and he said, why don't you get a pulley, a motor that will lift the, the pail up. When he dumped the guy, get the garbage, pick it up, he had a lift in the back of the truck with a motor that lifted up automatically. Now you all see in Chicago how they, how they are doing it. So my father was part of that. All he got was they took him out to dinner. Thank God. Thank God. There's many, many stories I can tell about black history, even by myself. But I'm not going to go into it now. But, but I thank you, Pastor, for introducing me. Come on, let's praise God for that. That's black history, you all. Amen. I don't know if you all heard that part. He was telling, saying that they took him out to lunch. And that's what they did with a whole lot of us. <laughs> took us out to lunch and uh, told you thanks and told us thanks and they've been reaping the benefits of all of our ingenuity and thinking uh, for many, many, many years here in America. And we had to come up with these uh, ingenious ideas because we were the one doing all of the manual slave labor and uh, as a result of that uh, we think you know a lot of birth uh, a lot of things are birthed out of necessity and so these are things that uh, happened and here at Friendly Temple uh, the first black bus driver for CTA was a member here and uh, as a matter of fact I have the picture of him signing the contract with all of the dignitaries around. His name was Elder Andrews. He was the first African-American bus driver for CTA. He was an ordained elder right here and uh, or an elder of the Church of God in Christ. Isn't that something? He was the first African-American bus driver. A few years later, Sister Sheila McKinney would become the first African-American union steward for, was it Pace? She was the first African-American union steward for Pace. She was the first woman First African-American woman, union steward for PACE. Amen. So there's a lot of wonderful history uh, that we can rehearse. And I've enjoyed uh, hearing and listening to and even refreshing my memory as I heard them talking about Robert's Temple and realizing that that's part of our jurisdiction. So our jurisdiction is part of uh, black history. Amen. I uh, wasn't able to make it. Uh, last year, Lewis Gossett Jr., uh, they came by and they did a full documentary there uh, in Roberts Temple. Of course, you all know we did the Roberts Temple rally 
that was covered by ABC7, uh, not here in Chicago, but out of New York. Uh, it was covered by ABC7, uh, Channel 7 out of New York because Will Smith and 50 Cent, they're doing a show, it should be starting sometime this year, um, about um, Emmett Till and all of the stuff that went on in that era. And they have picked up this show. And so Channel 7 came because they wanted additional footage about Robert's Temple. We had an opportunity to have uh, uh, Alex Jabay interviewed. Um, they wanted to interview Bishop Blake. We didn't quite get that done. Uh, but they, I think they're going to interview him over the phone or whatever. But nonetheless, they're there are things that speak to our history that's right among us. Yeah. Emmett Till's cousin, who was with him in the bed, is a, one of our Kojic pastors. His name is Pastor Willa Parker. And uh, he, is, uh, he was with him in the bed when they came and snatched Emmett Till out of the bed and uh, murdered him. And uh, I had an opportunity to meet with uh, some of the people from, uh, where is he murdered? In Mississippi. And um, we met at Robert's Temple and they were trying to raise money to redo the courthouse. And this is their story. They said they had to meet with the Emmett Till family and when they issued an apology to the family, then money started coming to rebuild the courthouse. They raised $3 million after they said they were sorry. I do believe there's some things that the Lord said, I'm not even going to let you get away with. You're going to have to correct this before we can go further. So I had an opportunity to meet with them, and uh, there are many of them uh, white and black uh, from around the nation uh, that uh, uh, celebrate the truth of what happened with Emmett Till and that whole piece, and, and uh, they're excited to see Robert's Temple even go further. So uh, we'll see where the Lord will take all of these things. Thank God for our African-American history. <laughs> Amen. And, uh, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the hood. Amen. Amen. We can read this, Miss. I ain't gonna hold you. Amen. Anybody know what I'm saying? It ain't. It just ain't nothing like the hood. It's nothing like it. There's a. It's. It's nothing like being black. Growing up, you know, playing outside, eating. Man, there's nothing like it. Getting chased by dogs and. Just all of it, you know. I'm talking about, you know, how many are the, the school buses? What? School bus? We walked to school. We, we didn't know we was in an inch of our life. It would be below zero. They didn't close no schools. 900 feet of snow. Your mama just put you on long johns, boots, two pair of clothes. So I'll see you when you get back. <laughs> And you made it, didn't you? Amen. Man, nothing like, nothing like it. Nothing like it. Amen. I was at a funeral the other day. How many of y'all remember this? These kids, they're not going to even know this, so I'm not, I'm not belittling you. I just know you don't know it. How many of y'all remember now, later, 10 cent a pack? Wait a minute, we got something here saying seven cents. You got me beat. You got me beat. You got me beat. I, I, I think about it, Sister Raglan, when I see, the, I see the, the package they have now, and they got a writing on there. They say 10% more. I'd be like, they just charging us 10% more. <laughs> them, little, them little tiny things, and they're so soft. Now these used to be big. You stick them in your mouth. And uh, you could suck on them, chew on them. You'd be there for a minute. How many of y'all remember wine candy was our penny? A pack of pumpkin seeds. A pack of sunflower seeds. 
You don't know nothing about no pickle and peppermint. Get out of here. <laughs> flaming hots. You don't know about no flaming hots. Flaming hots is when you bought some potato chips, open them up, and put real hot sauce in them. <laughs> Shook them up, and everybody's like, cobs. You're like, no cobs. <laughs> Let me get y'all out of here. Y'all about to go back. Sister Evans, you started us talking about something. Do we remember August? I know it's September. I know. Uh, and uh, I, I thought about that. Those were the days. And uh, yeah, you all don't you all don't remember when when we enjoyed good times. The the show. And uh, Sister, Sister Tiffany just said, you remember when the TV used to go off? We have enjoyed our programming for the day. Join us again tomorrow. Oh, say can you see? <laughs> and the TV went off. That was when folks got sleep. That's why y'all so tired. The TV never go off. People used to be, used to be well rested because it wasn't nothing to do. All right, let me get y'all out of here. You remember video games? The video game was remember that thing? It just go up and down. You just the ball go from side to side. We thought we was doing something. <laughs> You wouldn't know what to do. These kids would go crazy if that was the video game. Now they'd be like, what in the world is that? Oh. All right, that's enough of that. We're going to get ready to get y'all out of here. You know, those were different days. Remember your, your neighbors could whoop you? Your teacher could whoop you? And you bet not let your mama find out that either one of them had to whoop you. Because that was going to be worse. I remember sitting in Sunday school class and I don't know, whatever I did, Mother Davis pinched me. Y'all don't remember Mother Davis. She was a pincher. She pinched me. I just, hallelujah. I didn't get out and tell my mother either. Go to my mama. Mother Davis pinched me. Now, now today's parent, reinforces foolishness because instead of dealing with the child you go to Mother Davis you got something to say to my child you got you you're silly if I would have went to my mother and said Mother Davis pinch me well what did she have to pinch you for nothing you lying you saying she did I'm not lying. Well, why did she pinch you? I didn't say she, you calling me a liar? <laughs> Boy, you couldn't get out of it once you got in it. <laughs> ah, ah, so you know what we did? We just took it. And we learned how to behave. Act like we got some sense. And we were just like these little kids. We like to run and play. But when we came around the adults, we didn't run and play around the adults. We'll be running all through the church. <laughs> we get past them. <laughs> you know, that's, that's how we did it. As soon as we get out of y'all's sight. <laughs> uh, but that's because our parents wouldn't let us do a lot of foolishness and get away with it. All right, that's enough of that. All right, we're going to let y'all go home. Amen. Give y'all something to think about. Y'all quit going up to the schools fighting the teachers because your child is at school cutting up. And then you going up talking about telling them, she don't like my child. She don't like, she, he, he don't like my child. Your child is at school cutting up. It's, it's a lot of folk who wouldn't like your child with that type of behavior. And now, now you threatening to fight them because they got an F because they didn't do the homework 
And now you mad at them. All right, that's enough. Let's stand up. I gave y'all something to think on. I want you to come out this week. We'll be in our workers' meeting. We won't be in regular services here. We'll be in our workers' meeting every night, 7.30 nightly. Please join us. It's going to be a good time in the Lord. Always remember. Thank you, Sister Evans. Jesus. Jesus. Always remember. Jesus. Jesus, always keep him on your mind. Now, God in heaven, as we prepare to go from this place, but never from your presence, thank you, Lord, for our history that you have guided us through. You've allowed us to enjoy. We remember our past, and we look forward to our future. Now, Lord, I pray that as we go from this place, but never from your presence, that you will go with us, cover us in the blood, bind the hand of the enemy, look on those that are sick and shut in, look on those that are going through, keep us till we come again, and if the next time we meet would be a defeat of Jesus, thank God, and all the people said together, amen. Amen. Hold it right where you are. I want to do two things. I want to thank God for the food. The food was wonderful today. And second, last but certainly not least, I want to thank God for Sister Arlene Brown. Man, working with our young people. Come on, give it up for her. Working with these children. She's been going with it a long time. God bless you all. You're dismissed.